then on the CNC today, we're going to be doing these little whale serving trays. This one is not little. This is a pretty hefty whale. But we're going to do the ocean pour at the bottom of that. And if you're not familiar with the ocean pour, it's beautiful. Flying in here, I was like a kid in a candy store. This is my very first time in California. And seeing the, the beaches and all of the waves is pretty amazing. So we're going to be emulating that in the bottom of this. It's really easy to do, and it's something that moves along pretty quickly. But first, we're going to cut our cutting boards out on the CNC. So when you're doing countertops or you're doing tables and you want to be able to carry the epoxy down the edges, you need to have a round over, all right? So what happens if you don't? So on this side, we have a pretty brisk edge right here. And I'm gonna show you the difference with epoxy when you tell it where you want it to go versus when you just let it do what it kind of wants to do. It all comes down to surface tension. So if I've got epoxy on here and I want it to come down these sides, it's going to get stuck on all of the fibers and all of the grains of every single wood. It doesn't even matter if you take this up to 4,000. The epoxy will still kind of skid along and it doesn't like it. But if you have a nice rounded over edge, and you'll see this when I get to the actual demonstration, and I'm going to take a gloved hand and I'm going to dip my hand in the epoxy and I'm going to rub it around the edge here, I have broken all of that surface tension and the entire wave is going to cascade down the sides. So if you're not familiar with my work, one of my most known for things is my ability to carry designs down the edges. So for instance, I'm working on a nine foot by nine foot countertop right now for a custom home. And it was really important for these clients to have it make it look like a full piece of granite. They wanted it to be a continuous piece. So carrying the design down the edges is a really important part of epoxy work unless you want an abrupt edge. So it looks like we're ready. So we're gonna go ahead and get this started. Again, it's gonna be loud for about four or five minutes. If you guys wanna see more, feel free, whatever your comfort zone is, to stand up and come within the blue line. And then after it's done, if you have any questions, we're going to, that's a really good time to stop and ask them before we get too far along. Just like that, we have now got our cutting board cut out. I think it took maybe about four or five minutes. I wasn't timing it. But when you're doing batch work, for instance, if you have a client or that maybe wants 20 cutting boards, or if you have clients like I do sometimes that want 150 cutting boards, they want them all to be the same thing. And that's where the CNC is a beautiful tool to utilize when you're doing epoxy. Another great thing with epoxy and the CNC is I'm sure you've all seen them where people put their names or like a family name. They'll CNC out a client, a restaurant, somebody's name and then fill that with epoxy. Then all you have to do from there is turn around and run it through your sander and you've got it smooth again. If there is no need for anything to be dimensional, you can pour it in one pour if you are using the right epoxy. You have to use a thick set. You cannot use a one-to-one. -one. Does it crack? Yes. Okay. It, if I was to take the maker epoxy and let's say pour it a uh, six foot table, three inches deep, you're going to see that scary exothermic reaction 
where it literally just starts bubbling up like a volcano. It's smoking. It completely trashes the wood. The, uh, the maker epoxy is the one-to-one, -one, and that's the one you have to do in layers. The thick set or the fathom is the stuff that you can pour anywhere from two layers to three and a half layers. Oh, three and a half inches, sorry. Thank you. I'm focused on like drops now. All right, so here's the mix all. I've divided this into four different cups. The reason that I have this in four different cups will be, you'll, you'll see here in a minute. One goes off to the side. One of the big things that is always really important is making sure that you have more epoxy than you think you need. Nothing is more frustrating than you are building a, you know, 12 foot table and you are short on epoxy. And now all of a sudden, you are having to scramble to mix another batch. You know what happens? Is maybe you mix that batch only for three minutes when it's supposed to be five minutes, and you dump it in there, and now you have a half-cured table. That's even better when you come back to that. One of the things that I like to do, and it was really cool, and it worked really well in my favor until my mom got on social media, is I always have silicone molds. Like just, you know, you can buy them anywhere. They're little coaster molds, right? I take my epoxy and I, um, if I have leftovers, which I'll have right now, just mix some color, dump it in a mold. So I'd been giving those to my mom as gifts and she thought for like a year that I was making her all this special stuff until she watched my social media and realized that it was literally the junk epoxy. She was not so happy with me at that point that she thought all along I was making her super special things when she was actually just getting my crap epoxy projects. But it works really well because then you can give them away. You can sell them. Do you guys see the difference already between a pigment and a mica powder? Not only is the quantity a little bit different, but the color is gonna be very different. Now I'm mixing this one a little bit slow because of that whole part about mica powder. And as it poofs up, it, it just literally gets everywhere. It gets on your project, it gets on your clothes, and it's really frustrating. So until it's incorporated, mix it slow. Once it's incorporated, you can go to town on the color. I don't know how well you can see, so I'm gonna hold this up. Hopefully you can see how this has a bit of a shimmer to it. That is the nice thing with mica powder, is it will give you that shimmer. Whereas just a straight up pigment, it's pretty flat. White. White is a very, very unique creature when it comes to epoxy pigment. White can either be your best friend or it's gonna be something you hate. White has different chemicals in it to make any sort of white, whether it is acrylic paint or whether it is this paste that I'm using here. White will break epoxy. And what I mean by that is when you mix white, it doesn't matter if it's acrylic paint, it doesn't matter if it is a mix-all, and it doesn't matter if it is this specially designed paste for epoxy. It will create what is called cells. Pour the epoxy down, and remember, it is going to flatten out. I always hold mine a little bit away from the edge, and then you would be amazed at how much epoxy is in your cup. I'm gonna just leave that turned over there, and you guys will see the little circle that happens from the color. Even on large pours, when I'm working in gallons at a time, I will take the bucket, flip it over, and leave it there. You probably have, on average, another anywhere, on a gallon bucket, you've got a solid 10 to 12 ounces that's going to drip off of those sides. Second color just goes right on top. And as you guys can see, it's already spread out quite a bit from where I started. Gonna leave that there for a second. Now, like I said, I've got some epoxy sitting here in this cup. And I'll turn this that way here in just a second as soon as I get these colors down. But all I'm doing is rubbing it on the edges. Now, if you were talking about your under pieces, if I didn't want to clean up the drips here. For cutting boards, I do not recommend this for tables. Let me say that now before I forget. 
But for cutting boards, something that you can do is you can just take uh, furniture wax, rub it along the underside of the cutting board, and then after you are done, you can easily just wipe it off or use a paint scraper to scrape off the epoxy. It won't stick to that. Tables, I do not recommend that because if you're trying to coat that underside of that edge, a table is a much larger creature. I really recommend that you stick with the tape for that way. I'm gonna turn this around in a second and you guys will be able to see the difference between a torch and a heat gun and manipulating it. This technique is extremely useful for counters if you were doing something like that. So front row is gonna get the best view of how this works and I'm gonna work a little bit backwards. All I'm doing is moving the epoxy to the edge here so I don't have to worry about blowing it around so much and because it is so warm here, it's already starting to get a little bit sticky and a little bit tacky. Now, I don't switch gloves. I was very specific with these guys with heat guns. I have been using the same Wagner heat gun for about two and a half years now. These things can take a beating. Only three things that I'm 100% specific on that has been able to withstand me. Best 25 bucks that I've ever spent. As you can see, I'm not keeping the heat gun in the same place, right? I'm moving it around and letting it evenly heat the epoxy instead of keeping it in one spot. What I'm doing here is adding a float layer. I am giving the epoxy something to float across so my colors do not get mixed together. Keeping the heat gun moving, now I'm gonna come back. See how all of those cells are opening up? I don't know if you can see them on there, but again, I'm keeping the heat gun moving. And giving it a chance to pull and retract back. As you can see, it's also moving down the sides. And the white is not mixing with the blue. So if you do not want your colors to mix, add a float layer to it. So this is what I was talking about with the white. Folks oftentimes get super frustrated when they are working and doing white tables because it pulls away and it separates. If you are doing a white table, I really, really encourage you to spend the money and get a good pigment. Mixol isn't the only brand on the market, it's just my favorite, it's the one I am most comfortable with. But if you Google epoxy pigments and epoxy paste, you can find out other different brands. I don't know them. If you want to create these cells, the way that that happens is by adding so much white to the epoxy. So that, again, if you're making a white table, you think, well, it's kind of translucent, so I'm gonna dump more white in there. It's actually counterproductive because what it's going to do is create the cells that you're trying to avoid in the first place. But then people get frustrated because their white tables look like skim milk. The easiest way to do that, honestly, is to paint the base any way that you can, paint it white, and then add the white epoxy on top of that. That'll get you that nice, rich color. If you guys are working on countertops, this is the best way to get those beautiful edges, is to take a gloved hand, run clear epoxy over the edges when you get started, do your pours down the center, and remember that the epoxy is gonna to continue to roll over it. The epoxy is gonna to continue to change and shift as it settles down. I'm not even gonna to touch this because I like the way that this one looks. If you do have any questions, feel free to hang out. Other than that, thank you all so very much for coming down.